What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. I hope you're all doing well. Now, I have a quick tip video for you today. So this one should be nice and short and sweet. I was setting about making some boxes and I was just cutting up some uh, walnut. I split this board in half and I thought to myself, that's quite a nice book match. So I might actually join these two pieces together instead of using them for little boxes, which is what the video I had intended to make was supposed to be about. But uh, I thought what I'd do is I'd show you how I book match timber, how I do it by hand, and how I joined two boards together by hand. And we make a little jig to glue this up as well in this video. So without further ado, let's get in for a closer look at what we're about to do here. And uh, we'll joint and book match two pieces of walnut by hand. Let's do it. Okay, so here is the board in question. And you can see after I split it, it has a quite a nice book match. So this might do for a, like a large box top or a side of something. It has a quite nice pattern in it. So here is our original board. Now there's a couple of things about working with wood and the joys of wood is when you cut something, you never quite know how the wood is going to react. So I just dimensioned this one up and I split it on my bandsaw and you can see the major gap I have in it now. So this board, when you cut into timber, it releases tension. So that's one thing you should understand about working with wood. It can surprise you. So you can see I have quite a big gap in here now. So this board actually cupped this way and it has cupped slightly this way as well, which is a bit of a pain. But like I said, I was making these to make a top and a bottom for some small little gift boxes that I was planning on making a video of. But when I opened them up, I saw this was quite a nice book match. So we're going to join this together. Now, it's a little bit of an issue that the boards are slightly cupped and stuff. It shouldn't be too big a deal, but we will have to re-dimension this after we re-glue it. But uh, what I'll do is we'll save the book match because it's so nice. So let's get on and do that now. I'll show you how to joint these two edges by hand. We have a nice big gap down here. It's not a very good jointable edge. So uh, we don't want to see this when we have this glued up. Um, so let's get on and do that now. Okay, so I'm going to use a hand plane to get a nice jointable edge in this. I'm going to use my five and a half because the boards aren't that long. If they were really long boards, you could use the number seven. And I'm also going to use the moxon vise just to hold this in. So we get the moxon vise set up on the table here. And then we get our two boards in the vise. I'll show you how you join them together so that even if your angle is off square, you still get a good joint. So let's do that. Okay, we're going to take our piece and set it up in the voice and we're going to plane both jointable edges at the same time. Now the reason I decided to make this video is because the book match actually makes this nice and simple. So you guys can get the idea of how you turn these two pieces of timber. So what you want to do is now is actually close the book. You'll see what I mean now. So when I'm joining these two edges together, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them back to back like that in the voice. So remember, we want to now, that's an open book. We can take it as, and now we want to close the book. And now we're going to put this in the voice, and we're going to plane both of these edges together. That way, if we're slightly off square, one angle will compensate for the other angle, and we can get that nice jointable edge. So it all makes sense now in a minute. Now, just looking at these two pieces, they are continuing to move. So I've literally just split these about five minutes ago, and now I have two walnut bananas rather than two walnut boards. So you can see just how much wood can move when you split it and you release that tension. So the moxon voice may not work now because I need to clamp these boards completely and the moxon voice is not deep enough with the screws. We may have to use the bench voice instead. So let's do that. Right, so I'm gonna use my bench voice so I can clamp this because these boards have sprung so much just to make it easier. And I, like I said, I wanna maintain the book match. Now, if you were just jointing two boards and you weren't trying to book match them and you had two perfectly flat boards, you wouldn't have to go to all this trouble. But uh, I wanna keep this book match, so I'm gonna do this. So again, we wanna close our two pieces just like this, get them in the voice. So I wanna get this nice and lined up. This voice is nice and deep, so I can I can actually compress these two boards together in this voice. And I want to clamp the two ends as well because they're slightly sprung apart. So we just get these F clamps on. Okay, so that's our piece all clamped up. Now, 
I'm just going to plane, like I said, both of these edges together. Now, I don't have to keep this perfectly square. I'm going to try and keep it as square as I possibly can. But if the plane tilts left or right slightly and I put a slight angle in these, that angle will be cancelled out when I open the book again, which is the beauty of doing both of these simultaneously at the same time. So a few strokes of the hand plane and we should be good. Now, I have a nice razor sharp hand plane here. It's freshly um, sharpened up. One thing you always want to check as well when you're doing any of this kind of work is that when you extend the blade out, make sure that that is perfectly square to the sole. Um, sometimes you can just pick up your hand plane and your blade isn't perfectly square and that will set you off on the wrong foot straight away. So let's get planing this. Okay, so we're just going to take a couple of strokes on this. We don't, shouldn't have to do too much. We just want to get these two edges nice and flush with each other. And like I said, I have a razor sharp plane here. Now, I have a good bit to take off this end. These two are already jointed, so we get the whole lot matching down. So I like to just keep some pressure on the toe of the plane when we're driving into it, and then you can equalize that pressure as you get through. A little bit more pressure on the back toe and uh, just follow on through until we get two full length shavings. Bit more to go on the back here. And like I say, if we play in a different, if we play in a slight angle into this, when we join the two of these back together, they will cancel each other out, which is the beauty of doing this. I reckon that should be good. That is silky smooth like a glass. Now, let's check our joint. Okay, so let's take a look at our joint. Now remember, we close the book and then join these two edges together. So that's our book open. So imagine this is the cover of the book and you're closing your book. Now this is true of any two boards that you want to join together. It doesn't have to be for book matching. If you just want to join two boards together and you want to get a perfectly jointable edge, this is a technique to do it by hand. So let's just get this guy lined up and have a look. Now that is pretty good. That line has completely disappeared in here. And like I said, if the angle is not perfectly square to the face, that doesn't matter because the two angles will cancel each other out and uh, you will get a good jointable edge. I'll get you a close up of that and you can see just how tight that is there now. Okay, so there's a quick close up. So you can see there's our edge there. So you can see when I push that together, that is a perfectly jointed edge and that will almost disappear. So. We're going to join these two boards together. It's a little bit trickier now that I have a kind of a cup and stuff in the board. But like I said, if you were starting with two perfectly dimensioned flat boards and you weren't trying to save a book match, uh, this would work nice and easy. So let's build a little jig now and get these glued up. Okay, let's get these boards jointed. Now, nice and simple, this jig. It's just essentially a piece of plywood underneath. We're going to take our two pieces that we want to book match. We're going to line them up and we're gonna put two pieces either side that we can clamp this in. Now this works for really thin pieces of material. So if you're trying to book match a really nice thin piece, maybe like a kind of a veneer, this really helps. So essentially you lock your two pieces of timber in place with these two, you glue the edge, catch it like that, and you just snap it back down and that tension will hold these two together nicely. I'll show you now in a second. Now I have the extra added problem, the fact that these boards are cupping and twisting and it's not stable timber, but uh, if you're doing this and you have two perfectly stable pieces of wood that you've already dimensioned up, you won't have any of this trouble. So a few countersunk screws in this one now, then we'll clamp these two together, get some screws in this side and we should be good. So let's go. Okay, so we're almost ready for glue up. Now I've added two body clamps. Now, ordinarily I wouldn't do this. I would have just compressed the two of these, put screws in this side as well, and that's your jig more or less set up. So how you would use it then is you would pop your two pieces up, you would glue the edges right here, and you would just line the two of them back up until they, they touch again, and you would just snap them in place. So you would literally just catch it like that and you would snap it down in place and the tension between the two of those would hold those two pieces together and that would be all you needed. But because, like I said, 
but I have the extra added difficulty of this wood keeps moving and shifting because I've released so much tension when I split it in half, I'm actually going to use the body clamp. So I've left this side of the jig kind of free floating and I'm going to use the clamps then to actually pull this together. Now, let's get ready for glue up. I'm going to have to put a piece of masking tape strip underneath this because obviously I don't want to glue my boards to my jig. That would be a bad idea. So let's do that. Okay. Let's get set up to glue this up. So I'm just going to put a couple of strips of masking tape down again because I don't want to glue my boards to my jig. So two strips of that should do. Make sure we keep it nice and flat so we're not adding any discrepancies in. That will sit under the joint of our board then and again just help us prevent gluing our pieces to our jig. Okay, a couple of trial runs just to make sure our boards go together and that we can align everything up and then we should be good to go to get the glue on this. Let's do it. Okay, so we're ready to go. I'm happy with everything. I know this is going to work. A couple of test runs. So let's just get some glue on it now. So I have some tight bond tree here which I'm going to use. As always, the finger is one of the best glue spreaders on the market. So let's use that. A little bit on that side. Hey, okay, happy days. Our two pieces are now ready to go. Let's get them into our jig. We'll just snap the two of them together. Just like that. We'll just get rid of that glue squeeze out so we can see our book match properly. Make sure we're 100% happy the whole way down. Everything is nicely aligned. Hey, voila. Now, I'm going to put a couple of clamping coils on this as well, because obviously I have some tension in my boards and they want to flex up and down. So a couple of clamping coils across the top of that. A bit more masking tape on this and I'll get the clamps on and we should be ready to go. But essentially, that's how you would make your jig for book matching two pieces or even jointing two boards. And it can do extremely narrow pieces by using a little jig like this. So, I'm going to get the clamping coils on this now and uh, we'll have a look at the finished result. Okay, so I'm just adding a few coils, like I said. Now, one of the nice things about these big body clamps is they actually act like feet, so you can actually set your jig up. So again, I've just put some masking tape on it, just so I don't glue my coils to my piece. I'm just going to get a couple of clamps on these, just to help that wood stay flat, because it is cupping like crazy. And again, like I said multiple times throughout this video, if you have just two straight pieces of timber that are relatively stable, you won't have to go to all this trouble. It'll literally just be a case of joint your board, snap it in your jig and leave it set up. But uh, because I have all this going on, um, it's a bit of a nightmare. Now, just like that. Okay guys, it is a few hours later. So let's check and see if this has stuck together. It should have, I don't see why not, but uh, hopefully we can get a nice little book match piece here that we can use in a future project. Okay, actually doesn't look too bad. And at least we have more board to work with now so we can take the cups out of these boards without losing too much out of each of them. The reason why I didn't actually uh, put these back through the planer, take the cup and stuff out of them, because I would have lost way too much material and uh, they would have got very, very narrow by the time I took the cup out of the two boards. But by joining the board together, flattening it out a small bit, I might be able to just take down an edge or two and save most of the material. So, I'll give this another shot of a hand plane now and let's see how successful we are. Okay, I'll give this a quick plane just to see how it's going to look. I won't take too much off it. I'll wait until I'm going to use it in a project and then I'll give it the final dimension. But I'm just going to give it a quick plane up just so you guys can see. And hopefully we have a pretty decent jointed edge. If we have done our job. Let's see what we have.
Anyways, there we go. I just roughly planed this flat, the side that I want the book match on. Now we have an absolutely beautiful joint here. There is no gap absolutely in that whatsoever. However, my book match did slip slightly. So I always show the mistakes on this channel as well as the successes. So it has just slipped slightly in the jig. That's my fault in my haste. So let that be a lesson to me and hopefully to you guys as well to check and recheck, make sure that everything is nice and lined up. And especially when you walk away from it, um, that everything is still held in place. It just slipped a tiny bit. So it's not quite matching up, but it's still a really beautiful joint. So this technique, for uh, jointing two boards uh, works and it works really, really well. So let me get you in for a close up of the joint. I'll get you right in a close on it. I'll pour some um, spirits on this so you can see the grain a bit clearer and uh, you guys can see for yourself. Okay guys, there is as close as I can get you guys to that joint. So you can see it's absolutely flawless. Um, the joint we've got using that technique with the hand plane and closing the book to join those two edges gives you two uh, gap free that is per you can't even your finger can't even feel it and your finger is very very sensitive to any discrepancies in wood and, and there's nothing to be felt there whatsoever but as you can see my book match has slipped a small bit now I planed the edges so it's going to um, shift where the grain is anyway so you can see the grain here and here is a couple of mil out but here and here it's a bit more so the more you plane both of these back the harder it's going to get to match them together so you don't want to plane too much off I might have planed a little bit too much off and then let it slip slightly that was my mistake but still going to be really nice for some box tops that I'm going to get out of this in a future video so let me get some spirits on this and give you guys a look at the grain. Okay, I'm just gonna put a bit of clean spirit on this. It'll just evaporate off. Um, it won't leave anything in the wood. It's just, again, just to highlight the grain so you guys can see it. I'll just spill a bit on there. So there we go, that should be a really nice figure for a box top. Um, I might use multiple different pieces of this for some nice small boxes, but you can see we almost have a good book match all the way down. It's a nice design either side. It's not too much of a catastrophe, but just be careful, like I said, when you're planing down both sides, you're actually changing the match the more you plane off each edge. And if it slips slightly in the jig as well, it won't quite um, line up. But I still think that is fairly pretty. What do you guys think? Okay guys, so there we go. Hopefully you've enjoyed that and hopefully you've got something out of it. It's a great technique for joining two boards. Remember, put your two boards together where you want them to join and close the book and plane both those edges. And even if the angle is slightly off, they will compensate for each other and you get an absolutely flawless joint in your wood. It's so easy to do by hand. Don't let it be intimidating. Don't try and do one side, then the other side, and then try and join those two pieces together. That can be very, very frustrating. Believe me, that's how I used to try it until I saw this technique of just closing the book and planing both edges together. It matches them up absolutely beautifully. And as for the book match, it's not too far off. Um, again, I might have planed down either side a little bit too much, but it's still an actually pretty and beautiful design. It's almost like a tiger stripe pattern we have there now, which is quite nice, and that will look nice in some of the boxes. And again, it wasn't the video I intended to make. I was busy preparing some of this red oak to make some nice little uh, handmade gift boxes or keepsake boxes, and I was going to do a walnut top and bottom on it. We're still going to do that in an upcoming video, but uh, just I wanted to show you guys how to join two boards and uh, get that nice flawless edge. So hopefully you've enjoyed it again, guys. If you have, give the video a thumbs up, comments and questions below as always. Thanks as always to everybody over on Patreon who continue to support the channel. Very much appreciate it, guys. I'm going to get out of here now. That's two boards perfectly jointed together. Not quite a perfect book match, but uh, yeah, a good video nonetheless. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Take it easy.